It is class time, 2023, nail tech event of the Smokies. The first video clip you see will be of a man getting his first pedicure out in the display room before classes actually start. Alright, so what you you got your neighbor? 
Okay. <laughs> One person puts their foot on the next knee. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. I need your other foot. This is my or remember when she was talking about the hot towels. You have two young girls. Remember when she was talking about the hot towels and before you start services, if they tell you that you ask them, do, do you have neuropathy? And I said, what's that? And so, can you feel your feet? And um, again, what you're going to do is ask them to close their eyes and you're going to touch some part of their foot, like the big toe, with just enough pressure to bend that filament, not all the way in half, but just enough to slightly bend it. And then you ask them, where am I touching? So go ahead and do that right now. Okay. Don't break it, just touch it. <laughs> like the ball of my foot. For a lack of a better way to say it. Right. Okay. Did everybody, was everybody yeah, like able to heel. feel yeah. where they touched you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then when you get through with that individual, do you hear me say I can't what hear. we're going to do is touch their foot in several areas. The big toe, the ball of the foot, the heel, and then one other toe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might find somebody here with neuropathy. Did you That's really why nothing goes you out. might be yeah. surprised. <laughs> the heel, that's ticklish. <laughs> At the bottom of the bowl. I'm sorry? What was your question? I said, what do we do with this DNA? We just collected. Well, history. They may have a certain occupation that puts them at risk for fungal health. They may be taking certain medications that can that can be indicators as to their health, as to what has become a potential for making them more like diabetics have a little higher rate of getting fungal males because some of their immune systems have disappeared. So people with immunological problems, those are people that are more susceptible to fungus. Surgical history of the footer digits could interrupt the nail matrix. Um, hospitalizations like COPD can change the curvature of the nails. Um, cancer, melanoma, tumors. We're gonna, we're gonna pretend that Aaron has sent me a patient with a pigmented nail streak. But before I really get to that, I want to talk about that filament for a second. Okay? If you touch that filament to the bottom of someone's foot, okay, no discussion was had yet about what if they say I don't feel it. Okay? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna tell them, oh my god? Are you gonna fall off your chair? <laughs> okay, you know, so number one, there is an age-related decline in the ability to feel. It may be meaningless, maybe nothing. If they could feel a pebble in their shoe, very often I'll say to someone and I'll say, if you had a pebble in your shoe, would you know it? Because that's something that happens sometimes. It's a, it's definitely, I definitely would know, okay? Um, so that's a, some indication that the protective sensations attack, okay? Um, but anyway, there's a normal age-related decline, and diabetes is not the only reason medically why someone would lose sensation on the bottom of the foot. They could be an alcohol abuser. They could have a whole set of inf various infections that cause nerve degeneration. They could be on chemotherapy for cancer, which causes degeneration of the ability to feel. They could have spinal arthritis or a herniated disc. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. You're not the detective here. You're just, what you're just looking to do is take that patient who was not aware that there was a, a, a little deficiency in their ability to feel and say, you need to check this out with your primary care physician. Now, many times, the primary care physician doesn't even know what to do, okay? Um, but that's not your, your problem. And sometimes they'll be dismissive because you're the one that's, that found it.
So there's a lot of egos involved, all kinds of stupidity where the patient doesn't come first. So, but it's a, it's a wonderful, I mean, I know, I know that when I take out that filament test in my office, Half the patients say, you know, you're the 10th podiatrist I've seen, no one has ever done that. And immediately, immediately, I'm different. I'm not gonna say better or worse, but I'm different than everyone else that they've been to before. And that's what we seek for you, okay? It just takes a little bit of extra or difference to make them feel that you're better. And if I'm a doctor and I'm receiving a note from you saying this patient has a irregularly shaped nail, I'm, I'm going to eventually say this is the nail tech that I want my patients to see or the type of nail tech that I want my patients to see. A lot of my colleagues are not happy that I'm here teaching you the stuff that I'm teaching you. But you know what? It's all egomania, stupidity. So that's why we're here. All right, so I, early on in my career, all my colleagues, except Dr. Spaulding, they want to be bone surgeons. You know, they want to fix bunions and hammer toes and operate on broken bones, okay? And I, did, I wanted to do that. And I was waiting and waiting for all those patients to flood my office. I was uh, thinking I'll see patients Monday to Wednesday, I'll be in the operating room all day on Thursday, and Friday playing golf. But they, they never showed up. You know who showed up? People with skin and nail problems, of which I never concentrated on in school and never knew nothing about, okay? And I decided in the early 90s, which was 10 years into my practice life, to get extra training in skin and nail diseases. Real real training in a fellowship program. And I started to then teach my colleagues about skin and nail diseases. And all that resulted in is them sending me more people. And what I, what I was talking about is in the skill set of every one of my podiatry colleagues. Everyone can do it, okay? But you know, some, fear, some say, I will never pick up a nail clipper in my office because then they won't think I'm a surgeon, okay? So there's all kinds of craziness, but skin and nail disease is very important. And then I also found in my training that this is not about fixing a painful bump on the foot. This could be about saving someone's life. And it sounds dramatic, but on a very regular basis, I am informing people that they have something that could, could, they could die from, okay? Now, I don't want you to be in that situation, but I want you to be an extension of my eyes. That's what more eyes is about, okay? And if, if one of you in the next six months sends one person to a doctor where an a, a investigation of a, of a mole on the foot turns out to be cancerous in a stage that's curable. You know the saying, you know, help, help one person help the world? It's just unbelievable, okay, that feeling and that patient will never forget you for the rest of their life. And bravo, it's all it takes is an extra five minute surveillance of the skin finding out, looking, and saying, you need to be seen and checked out. Okay, so we can keep this informal, all right? If there's any language here that's strange or foreign, stop me, okay? And um, any questions you have, stop me. So, but what I don't want to happen here is I don't want you to think that every little freckle on your body is might be cancer, okay? <laughs> You can show me anything you want to show me, but it's not, you know, there's, there's, everybody has lots of things on their body that are meaningless, so, okay, but that, that happens a lot. All right, so, okay.
Thank you. You're gonna convince. All right. So, eighty-five percent of my podiatry colleagues have no clue how nails are even formed or grow or anything like that. You guys who sit with nails all day long probably also really don't know how a nail grows. So we're going to review that and, and because the only way to know of, about how that streak on the right forms is for you to have a knowledge about how it would get there in the first place. Okay? So, okay. This is just a picture of anatomy. Do me a favor. Wait till I say next slide. Okay. So this is a little exaggerated picture. Most people don't have this amount of fat under the nails. Okay. But what you have is bone. You don't have a pointer. A pointer. Well, that laser thermometer. No, forget. It. Okay. So we have the bone underneath, and we have all the layers of the skin, like anywhere else on the body. Is also in the nail unit. They're just a, a little bit of a different uh, function. So there are five layers involved. Okay, you got the fat layer, you have the dermis, you have the epidermis above it, and then you have the nail plate. So where the nail plate is, anywhere else on your body is similar to the uppermost layer of skin. But except where the nail bed is, it's a specialized uh, uh, tissue that protects the tips of the toes for, from injury. I don't want to get into evolution or God or anything like that, but there was a time when the feet used to be a grass being sand. So, so when, when your ancient ancestors lived in trees, they had to hang on to the branches. So nails on feet Okay, were really one's hands, and the nails are used for a grasping function. Okay, so the nail is just a specialized form of the upper layer of skin that covers the toes. Okay, this white half moon that you can see most pronounced on the big toe or the thumb is called the lunula. Moon, like for moon, because it's a, it looks like a moon. All right. The, uh, the medical word for that is matrix, and that is where the nail grows from. The nail is originated in this part, and this this part goes back underneath the skin, all the way back, and forms the nail. And I'm going to show you how that happens. Next slide. Okay, so we'll do some anatomy now. Okay, every time you press, it's going to be an arrow there. Right? So hit the first one. Good, all right. So the nail plate, again, is for protection and grasping, a little bit less on the toes, but it used to be for that on toes. Okay, next one. The proximal nail fold. That is the skin in back of the nail. Okay, the next one is the cuticle. The cuticle, which is the famous controversial structure that everybody's fighting about. Okay, but there's no reason to fight about it. The cuticle is there for a reason. Okay, the proximal nail fold has to be adherent to the nail plate, and that's what the cuticle does. The cuticle does that attachment. When you push it back or file it away for aesthetic purposes, you are interrupting a barrier that in the wrong situation can create a horrible, horrible infection. So I tell all my patients, whether they have disease or not, whether they have bad circulation or not, that they should tell their nail technician not to push back or disrupt the cuticle, okay? I'm sure there are some things you could do to it that are like barely touching it that flatten it enough for whatever the reason. I mean, I, I mean, it doesn't look like that's visible, but the cuticle is definitely a protective anatomic structure that when breached can allow bacteria <coughs> to get in. Okay. We want to thank our students who were in the class. They are proudly showing off their certificates. 
you could have a certificate and be part of our class next year. Be sure to go to MedinelLearningCenter.com to sign up for classes or to make it easier. At the end of this slide, you will find a QR code, which will take you straight to Medinel Learning Center and give you the option for three free modules to take so you'll understand how the software works. Again, if any questions, call 423-805-7966 Monday through Friday and someone should answer your phone or you can leave a message and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for all your time and effort and thank you for the class people.